Hey everyone, I'm Chelsea Evans and I'm a furniture artist from Redesign with Prima. And today I'm gonna to show you what stencils are, how you use them, and what you can use them on. We're also gonna talk about troubleshooting too. So if you have any issues you have to fix, I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. And then we will seal them. So let's talk about the different types of stencils that Redesign with Prima has. They have two different types of stencils. One is called a stick and style stencil. This is really cool because it's a stencil and a sticker in one. So you can apply it to anything it will stick to. It's ideal for flat surfaces, but it's also really great for uh, curved surfaces because it will stick to it. So I'm gonna open it up and show it to you. They come in a package like this. And they are in a roll. And they unroll just like that. And then they stick. You can cut off the piece that you're going to use on your project. And then the cool thing is they're sticky enough that you can use it as many times as it will stick before you toss it. So these are kind of like disposable stencils. Use it as much as you can and then toss the section you cut off. You can roll up the, whatever's left and then you can store it however you store your stencils. The other type of stencils are plastic and you can reuse them as many times as you want. They come in different sizes. This one's a smaller one. This one's called Elegant Lace and it's beautiful. I'm gonna show you guys how to apply this onto a jewelry box with 3D fiber paste. And we're going to use this stencil to make a 3D stencil. So I love these stencils because you can do a flat stencil, a metallic stencil, or you can make it 3D. They're really cool. So that's a smaller size. There's a little bit bigger size. This is great for stenciling tile. You can stencil anything that it will fit on. And the great thing about these is they're repetitive. So I can take the stencil and overlap it a little bit and create a continuous design across whatever I'm placing it on. Redesign also has larger stencils. So these are really great for doing on the sides of furniture, the tops or fronts. And I recently stenciled my entire basement floor, the concrete floor, using this stencil and another one, and it looks amazing. So you can stencil on anything that you can think of doing. You can use these stencils on anything you want, from furniture to paper. Uh, I talked about using them on flooring. You can also use these to paint cloth. So if you wanna do an apron, if you wanna do a bag, or maybe you have like a Levi jacket that you wanna bleach, you can take either the plastic stencils or the stick and style stencil, lay it onto that fabric, and you can spray some bleach solution on it and let it bleach in the sun and you're gonna have that design on it. Or you can use any permanent fabric ink and you can use it on that as well. So possibilities are endless. All right, let's jump into a demo. I picked up this tray at a local thrift store for a buck 25 and it wasn't very pretty. I painted it white, distressed it a little bit, and now I'm gonna show you how to make it look like a custom designer tray, one of a kind. Okay, so we're gonna use the stick and style stencil first. This one is the Mendy Border stick and style stencil. It has bohemian vibes, I really love this one. And I've got my scissors. So I'm just gonna kind of lay it out where I want it to be, and then we will cut that piece off of our stencil. I'll just unroll it. And it's, it is forgiving, so if it sticks onto my piece, it's not there forever. The only thing you wanna make sure of is that your paint is completely dry before you apply your stick and style stencil, or you might just pull off your paint. Okay, that looks good. Now at the end of your stick and style stencil, there's a little piece of wax paper. This is just to keep it so you can unroll it initially. I usually set that aside, and then when I cut off the stencil, I set it on the new piece so I can easily grab that, but you don't have to keep it. So I'll lay that out and then I will trim off from my roll. And then I'll grab my little piece of wax paper and just set it right there. 
Okay, now let's say I was doing a bunch of trays. I can keep using this same piece that I cut out as long as it will stick. And then as long, and when it stops sticking, I can toss it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set this towards the bottom of my square. And then I'm just gonna slowly lay it down and make sure it lays nice and flat. And if it doesn't, you can peel it back up and then smooth it down. It's pretty forgiving. All right, so we have it all on there the way I want it to be. If you are very particular about things being perfectly even or perfectly straight, then you can have a, like a small measuring tape or a ruler and you can check your measurements. But I feel like just by looking at this, this is pretty straight and I feel good about it. I'm gonna use chalk paste. So this color is called Province. It's a really beautiful blue tone and I think it will look nice against the white. Chalk paste is a paint, but it's thickened. So you can have texture on when you use it or you can apply it in a thinner coat to paint small items. It has this great plastic lid that keeps it nice and moist. How can I spread this? Okay, I can use a brush and I can stipple it on or we can use something like this wide blender from scrapbook.com. So when you, if you get this tool, it has a little piece of felt on it with adhesive, but you can take the adhesive and pull it right back and then you just have a plastic tool. This is nice because it's flexible and I'm gonna be able to cover a lot of that stencil with one swipe, so that's really nice. I'm just gonna take the chalk paste and put it on the edge and I'm just gonna kind of set it down right on my stencil to get it where I want it. And then we're gonna go ahead and just spread that right over my stick and style stencil. It doesn't have to be on there really thick. It really depends on how you want it to look. If you want it to be more 3D, then you can put it on a little bit thicker. If you want it to be thin, then scrape off your excess. And I'll just come back and kind of lightly scrape that off. I don't want it too thick because I want to use this tray. Maybe I want to put um, drinks on it or I can use it for decor. So if it's a little bit flatter, then whatever I'm setting on it later will sit flat, okay? And then I can just take my wet wipe and I can clean my tool and wipe all of that off. So now that the chalk paste is all spread on there, we're gonna peel it back and let's see how this looks. I'm just gonna grab the corner and we'll slowly peel that back. I peel it back slowly so I don't tear my stick and style stencil because I might wanna reuse it on something else. There we are, all finished. So I can set this aside, I can use it right now or I can set it on wax paper to keep the stick and when I'm ready to use it on something else I can or I can just toss it. So it's totally up to you and if you wanna save it or not. Isn't that beautiful? I absolutely love that design on there. The color looks awesome. I'm gonna let it totally dry and then I'll probably add a transfer or something on it and really spice it up. After that, I will seal it with a water-based sealer and I have a designer tray for a buck 25 from the thrift store. I love it. So once your chalk paste has completely dried, let's say maybe you put it on a little bit thick or you might have some peaks on it and you don't want them to be sharp. So when it's totally dry, you can take some sandpaper. I usually use 220 grit or finer and then you're just gonna lightly sand that chalk paste and it will make it nice and smooth and even. So now we've used a stick and style stencil on something small. Let's use one of the plastic stencils on something bigger, like an end table. I'm gonna show you how to stencil the sides of a funky Bohemian nightstand. We are gonna use the Boho Vibes stencil from Redesign with Prima. 
It is a large plastic stencil with a really cool design. I love this. And my nightstand, I've just blended colors, some really hot, fun colors, kind of like the Arizona sunset. And we're going to place the stencil over it in a white cream color. And that's going to make it really pop. And then it's gonna look really nice with our blended background. You can do it on any background. It doesn't have to be blended like this. You can do it on a solid, solid color, or you can do it straight to raw wood. That looks beautiful as well. You can even do it if it has texture. See how this has some crackling and a little bit of texture? Or you can do it on a smooth surface. Whatever is your jam, it's gonna work for you. So I have two different ways to apply it. I'm going to use one of them for a specific reason. I'm gonna tell you why. So there is a brush roller from Redesign with Prima. This is kind of a cool little tool. It comes in a package with three additional rollers and it's really nice for using, especially for stenciling. If I'm going to stencil a floor or if I'm gonna stencil tile, anything that I have a thinner paint, even on furniture, I'm gonna use this brush roller. It's really nice for that. But I'm gonna use the chalk paste this is from Redesign with Prima, and this is Vintage Lace. It's just a really beautiful, light, creamy white tone. And I'm going to be using the Wide Blender tool from scrapbook.com. It comes with a felt end, but it's it has adhesive on it, so you can actually take it off. Let's go ahead and pull that off and set that aside. You can reapply this later, but I take it off because then I have this nice plastic and I can clean my chalk paste off of it. It's flexible, so if you do have a dresser that's curved or um, has you know, some bumpy surfaces, it's flexible for that. So on the front of each stencil, it has a photo and an example, so it kind of gives you an idea what it's gonna look like. But you can make this stencil do anything you want it to do. If you want a repetitive pattern, like it shows on this dresser here, you'll just slightly overlap the stencil and then can, and it will give you a continuous pattern. If you want it distressed, then add a little paint here and there. Don't cover the whole stencil and you have a distressed look. So whatever is your jam, that's what you can do. Sometimes when I'm using a stencil, I will cut off this top edge and just give a small lip on the edge. That way I can butt it right up against a piece of furniture or you can leave this on, it's totally up to you. You can use this to hang and store it as well if you leave it. So for this piece, I'm going to use the chalk paste in vintage lace, and I'm going to use the wide blender tool, and then I have some painter's tape to hold my stencil in place. And I am just gonna rip off a couple pieces. I find that it's a little bit easier to get my stencil exactly where I need it if I have some pieces of tape ready to go. So I'll take my stencil and I am going to center it. And then I will just tape it right up. And then the bottom, I'll just leave it where it is because I don't wanna cut my stencil, all right? And I can just kind of make that work as I go around. If it's a little bit distressed, I'm totally cool with that. If you want it absolutely perfect, the tighter that you can get it to this surface, the better or more perfect it will come out. I think perfection's overrated though. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take the chalk paste and uh, I am gonna start, I'm actually gonna start at the bottom and work my way up. And I'm just gonna hold it in with my hand and I'm gonna do all of this section while I'm holding this part down. I'm gonna throw some on my hand and then I can just easily grab it from my hand and move up. No, you don't really need to do that. That was a mistake, <laughs> but it's fine. Chalk paste smells really good too. So it's kind of nice to use because it has a really pleasant scent. And it's going to give me a little bit of volume. So it's gonna give me a little bit of a 3D look, but it's not gonna be super thick. It will take a little bit longer to dry than a thinner paint. 
All right, so now I've got all that on there. I can kind of let that up a little bit. So now that I've done this part and I've held it down, the rest of it is holding pretty tight to my piece. So I can go right from there. And work my way up. Okay, so now that I've got all of that base part done, I just want my stencil to kind of fade out a little bit. So I'm just gonna apply it a little bit thinner. And if it doesn't cover every little part of the stencil, that's okay. You can make your design whatever you want it to be. So use your creativity and just have fun with it. I scrape off my excess and I'm gonna save it. So I'll just wipe it right off into my container. I'll rinse off my tool. And then you wanna save that little plastic lid that comes with your chalk paste. This keeps it nice and moist. It'll keep it from going bad and you can use it for a long time. So let's take the stencil off. This is the best part because it's so beautiful and I love this stencil. This is one of the newer stencils from Redesign with Prima and the design is beautiful. So I kind of hold the stencil in place and I'll pull my tape back a little bit first. That way I can remove the stencil all at once and I'm not gonna have a piece of tape stuck and try and pull the stencil back. All right. There we are. Isn't that fun, those bright colors behind? So it ties everything together, but then you still have a cool background. So whether it's a solid colored, textured smooth, or multicolored, you can do the stencil on it and give some pop. So I went ahead and stenciled the other side of the dresser, and I love it so much I decided we have to do the drawers. And it would probably be good for me to show you that. So this is how I'm gonna do it. I take the drawers out of the dresser, you don't have to do that. You can leave them in and stencil vertically, but I thought this would be a little bit easier. And I just laid them right next to each other. These have a frame on them, so they're going to be separated by that, but many dressers you do will have flat drawers, and so it's nice to lay all the drawers out, and then you can have one continuous stencil going all the way up the drawers, and then it will match up as well. All right, I am gonna use a little bit of tape just to kind of lightly hold this in place. And you can see it has some space between the stencil and the drawer. So this is going to give me a little bit more worn or distressed look. It's not gonna be as perfect. So just keep that in mind when you're doing it. But you can cut it down to fit if you wanted to do that. That's totally something you can do. I'm going to use the chalk paste, same color, and my tool, and we go ahead and apply it in the drawers. You can do it on the inside, like I'm doing. You can go up over any raised surfaces, so however you want to do it. I'm going to start in the middle and I'm gonna pull it down because remember our stencil on this piece is kind of fading up. Do a little bit more on this side and we'll take it off and show you. And I just kind of press it down and make sure it's still in the right spot and then go from there. Kind of pull it up. Okay, I think that's gonna have the perfect amount on it. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. Now, something I typically do when I'm working with a stencil and using it a lot, especially when I'm working on a floor or tile, I save this, the little plastic that it comes in. I actually do save that. And then I just set it aside and when I take my stencil off, I can set it on that plastic and that's gonna make sure that I don't get paint on my floor or whatever surface I'm setting my stencil on. So I'll just set it aside. 
And now we have our distressed stencil on our drawers. I love that. I'll let it dry. There's a few little peaks in here from the chalk paste, and I don't want them to be um, harsh or, or pokey. So as soon as this is dry, I'll go ahead and take my 220 fine grit sandpaper and just lightly go over the top and make it nice and smooth. And I can even distress it a little bit more if I want it more worn in uh, another place. All right, so I wanna add a little bit to the front. And I think this is good to show you because this is an unlevel surface. So let's say I wanted a really uh, nice design and I wanted it in, in the, the raised surfaces and in uh, the crevices, so the peaks and the valleys then I'll probably want to use a brush, like an artist's brush from Redesign with Prima, uh, or a stiff bristled brush. And then I can take my chalk paste or whatever paint I'm using, and I can stipple it into the crevices and on the flat parts. So from a $14 thrift store find to a custom one of a kind piece of artwork, this is awesome. I'm loving how it's turning out. And I love the stenciling on the sides and on the drawers. So I decided to add a little bit on the front. And I only went halfway because I wanna show you something on the other half, okay? So if you look at this stencil, you can see how there's some parts that went into the crevice and all the other parts are just on the flat raised surface. So we're gonna call this our peaks and our valleys, right? Now I used the wide blender to apply this stencil and in some spots it did get it in the crevices and some it didn't. I really like the look of that and so I'm going to continue that on the other side because I feel like that blends into the rest of the piece. But if you're stenciling and you want the stencil to go into the peaks and the valleys then you might want to use a tool like the Art Basics brush from Redesign with Prima. This is really great for stippling. So if I was going to, well, let's do it. Let's put our stencil up. And I want the stencil to kind of continue here. So we're gonna overlap it, okay? So I'm just going to find where that lines up. Right, let's see, right there. And we'll go ahead and tape our stencil down just like we did before. Okay, perfect. So now it's in place and it will line up. And if I want this to go in the peaks and the valleys, I'm gonna use this brush. I'm gonna hold it down so it's nice and tight. And then I'll go ahead and just stipple that product right over top of the stencil. And that way you're gonna get a nice consistent design, whether it's raised or indented, okay? So you want a brush for doing that. Now for us, we are gonna grab our wide blender and do the same thing that we did on our flat surfaces. So I'm gonna go ahead and start here and just kind of hit it a little bit to give that design coming this way. And then I'll go ahead and just, ooh, if it slips at all, just hold it down tight. And then I'll go ahead and just start pulling the design all the way down my piece. There we go. Perfect. All right. There we are. So we have our cool stencil coming right around and it looks a little bit distressed and a little bit complete, which I absolutely love. I think that's really fun. And then we have some peaks going on in here. Like I said before, let it dry, hit it with some sandpaper and we're golden. So now that we've finished the stenciling on this piece, we're gonna take it 3D. I'm gonna show you how to apply a 3D stencil to the side of this little jewelry cabinet. We are going to use one of the plastic stencils from Redesign with Prima. This one is called Elegant Lace, and we are going to use 3D fiber paste. This stuff is the bomb. It's super durable, it dries really hard, and it will be great for a flat surface or curved surfaces, and you can even repair with it. It's cool stuff, all right? So every time that I use 3D fiber paste with a stencil, here's the tools that I always have, okay? You're going to want a spreading tool. This is called the Wide Blending Tool, and this is from scrapbook.com, and it comes with this little felt piece on it, but you can take that off and use it, so I'm gonna do that before we get started. 
And then the other thing that you're going to want is some sandpaper. So you can use 220 grit sandpaper, or you can use a harsher sandpaper depending on your dried 3D stencil. So when you, after you apply your 3D stencil and it totally dries, you, it dries so hard that you can actually take an orbital sander and you can sand it and you can get it to be nice and smooth and it's not gonna sand right through the design. Today, I'm gonna show you how to do that on a jewelry box. So I've got one side that's already finished and it's all sanded and it's nice and smooth. So we are going to add a 3D stencil on the other side so it will match this one. So I have my jewelry box on its side. I think it's a little bit easier to apply the 3D fiber paste on something that's laying flat, but you can absolutely apply it to something on a vertical scale as well. All right, so we're going to take our stencil, the Elegant Lace. I love the stencil, it's really, really beautiful. And I've got my fiber paste and my tape, all the things that I need. And like I said before, we're gonna use the wide blender tool. So I'll go ahead and take off that felt piece. Now you're going to want to use a flat tool like the wide blender tool to apply 3D fiber paste because it's very thick. So I'm gonna take my tape and I'm just going to lightly tape it in place. If I was doing this on a flat surface, I would tape it so it laid nice and flat, but we've got a little bit of a curve on our jewelry box. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of lay it down like this. And then I just look at the design on each side and that's how I center it. Kind of match up my dots or the flower edges like that. And then I will take my tape and we will just kind of lightly hold it in place. This isn't holding it down tight against my piece. It's just making sure that it doesn't slide around all over the place. Okay, that is good. And I'll make sure I hold this end so it stays where I want it. So the 3D fiber paste is sealed and it is very thick, you can see. Okay, look how thick that is. I can turn that upside down and it's not gonna come off. So it does take some time to dry, keep that in mind. And you don't, it, you don't have to apply it really thick because the product is thick enough that even a thin layer of it will really pop when you paint your piece or you can add gl glaze or a wax over the top when it's totally dry. So I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna start, I don't know, right there. And I'm just gonna offload my tool. And then I'm just going to apply it to the piece. You can apply this to your piece as is. It just comes in a white color or you can actually mix your paint into this product. So you can use chalk paste and mix chalk paste into it, uh, or you can use any other type of paint and you can mix that into your fiber paste to tint the color. And then you can apply it that way as well. Depending on what type of paint you use, it will probably make it a little bit thinner and it might take a little bit longer to dry. So just keep that in mind, but you can mix other colors into it. All right, so I've got it all on there and I scrape back my excess. So it's still gonna give me a nice pop, but it's not gonna be so thick, okay? All right, I'm gonna show you guys what it's gonna look like when I take off my stencil. Uh, keep in mind, if you, any tool that you use to apply the stencil or the stencil itself, you're going to wanna clean uh, shortly after using it so that you can get the 3D fiber paste off of it very easily. If for some reason you forget and you let it dry, uh, this stuff is really strong. So you're going to have to peel it, kind of crack it and peel it off of your stencil carefully. You can also soak it in water and it will soften up. Uh, and if you leave it on your tool, you can scrape it off or you can even use sandpaper and sand it off and then you can wipe down the rest of it, okay? So let's pull this off, take a look. 
All right, so we have a nice 3D pop right there. Now I want you guys to look. So if you look at this, I mean, there's a little spot that I didn't have all the way down. I can just pull that off if I want to. And there are some little peaks. So anytime I do stenciling with the 3D fiber paste, when I pull the stencil off, it's gonna leave these little peaks on my stencil. Don't worry about it. Don't mess with it. Just let it be for right now. Let it, let it be like it is. When it's totally dry, and it may take some time to dry just depending on where you live and what your climate's like, uh, when it's totally dry, you can take your sandpaper and you can, I usually do 220 grit, but you could do, um, I have done 80 grit before when it's on there really thick and I have some really steep peaks. Uh, but you just take your sandpaper and then you can sand it by hand and kind of smooth it out. If you're working on a large piece of furniture and you've done a lot of stenciling, then using an orbital sander is a great way to go because you can take that and go right over the top of your 3D stencil and it's gonna make it nice and smooth and it will feel nice to the touch and then you can paint right over top of it. So the other thing that I will mention is when, when do you apply your 3D stencil? You can apply it at any, any point of the painting process. So if you've cleaned your piece and sanded it or prepped it and you're ready to paint, you can apply it right directly onto the piece of furniture. Uh, you can apply your primer and then apply that over top of the primer, or you can apply it and then your primer, or you can wait until you've painted it like I have, and then you can apply it and I can leave it white if I want, or I can add a little paint over the top and blend it once it's dry, or I can use decor wax, I can use glazes, any of those things I can use on it when it's dry and then I can paint it afterwards. So it's really up to you if you wanna mix and paint, if you wanna do it at the beginning or the end, whatever is gonna work best for your process, you can do that. So on this side, we already have our 3D stencil and I added a little bit of paint over top of it and I want it to pop just a little bit more. So we're gonna use decor wax. This stuff is so easy to use, it smells good and it will stay on and it's really easy to apply. It's gonna make it pop. So we are going to use a color called Eternal. It's a very beautiful light gold. It has a little bit more of a white gold feel to it. You can use your finger to apply it or you can use a brush, like the Art Basics brushes are really nice to use for applying decor wax. Uh, I usually use these when I'm adding it to the edges of my piece or I kinda just wanna lightly brush the decor wax on. I'm gonna show you with my finger how to apply it, okay? So it goes a long ways, you really don't need much. It is very intense. Uh, the pigmentation is beautiful on it. So I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to kind of drag my finger across the top of my 3D stencil. And we are going to give it some gold. You can hit it in some spots or you can cover the whole thing. And depending on how thick you applied, how thick you made your 3D stencil, it may be easier to hit those raised areas. Let me tip this on its side so you can see that gold a little bit better. It's a metallic, and so when that light hits it, it is beautiful. All right, so I'm just gonna finish applying this wax all over. And I am using my finger because I can hit those raised edges a little bit better than I can with the brush. So let's get her covered up. We're all finished applying the decor wax. I love that little pop of gold and elegance that it gives to our jewelry box and it just helps to enhance that 3D stencil on the side. So I can take the extra that's on my finger and I can apply it right onto my little knobs on the front. And then that's gonna tie my hardware into that pop of gold that I have on the stencil.